Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Let's Master English podcast. This is already Let's Master English 44. And once again, I am your English coach, Coach Shane. Thank you so much for downloading and listening to this podcast. Today we are brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audio book, but I'll tell you about them later. We're also brought to you by DDM Open. It's the best online class in the world, and I'll tell you about that later. First of all, I want to thank Roberto and Azin and all the other excellent listeners who helped make the transcription for Let's Master English Podcast 43. You can get the entire text file and, of course, the audio file if you go to www.letsmasterenglish.com. It's right there in PDF form. You guys are outstanding. Thanks, Roberto. Thank you, everybody. In today's podcast... Okay, the last two weeks, the podcasts have been too long, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I promise this time it will be shorter. We're going to have the news. We're going to have a great fact from Country Shane. There will be four questions from you. The book club will be a separate podcast. And that's it. So it's back to our regular style. I hope you guys like it. Enough chit-chat. Let's get into the news. A senior in high school was suspended last week for dealing coke out of his locker. Among the Atlanta youth's violations, he broke the school's nutrition policies. He's been booted for two days. He feels wronged, noting that other kids have sold marijuana, ciggies, and even acid out of their lockers. His mom agrees. The school went a little over the top. Uh, correction. It wasn't Coke, but Pepsi that the boy sold. Okay, this this news story is, is kind of funny. Um... We were talking about Coke, and then I mentioned marijuana, acid. These are drugs. These are very serious, illegal drugs in America. But then Coke, maybe you know Coke, another word for Coke. The proper word would be cocaine, C-O-C-A-I-N-E. But also Coca-Cola, the drink is called Coke. And believe it or not, Coca-Cola, the drink when it was first made, did actually have cocaine in it. It really did. But what's the story about? Is this story about cocaine? Or is this story about Coca-Cola? Let's listen again. A senior in high school was suspended last week for dealing coke out of his locker. Among the Atlanta youth's violations, he broke the school's nutrition policies. He's been booted for two days. He feels wronged, noting that other kids have sold marijuana, ciggies, and even acid out of their lockers. His mom agrees. The school went a little over the top. Uh, correction. It wasn't Coke, but Pepsi that the boy sold. Yeah, we're talking actually about Coca-Cola, but if you listen to the story, it sounds like we're talking about cocaine until the very end. And we're talking about Coca-Cola, which makes it funny. But the story is kind of serious. And it's actually even related to last week's. Uh, America has changed its school lunch program. And this is a story because of that. 
selling coke. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and listen to the first sentence again. A senior in high school was suspended last week for dealing coke out of his locker. Okay, so in high school, we all know high school. High school in America is usually 9th grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. Sometimes only 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. But anyway, a senior in high school means a 12th grade student, a 12th grader. So a 9th grader can be called a freshman. A 10th grader can be called a sophomore. An 11th grader, a junior, and a 12th grader, a senior. And the same in college. If you go to a university, a four-year college, a four-year university, your first year is your freshman year, then your sophomore year, your junior year, and your senior year. So we can use the word senior for both a high school student in his last year and for a college student in their last year. So here, a senior in high school was suspended last week. Suspended, S-U-S-P-E-N-D-E-D, kicked out of school for a period of time. Uh-oh, that's not good. This, this senior must have done something very bad. A senior in high school was suspended last week. Why? For dealing coke. <gasps> dealing, D-E-A-L-I-N-G, dealing coke. Well... These words go together. Dealing coke, dealing drugs, dealing cocaine, dealing marijuana. It means selling. Dealing can mean selling something usually illegal. Selling something illegal. Dealing drugs. A very common expression. Oh my goodness. A senior in high school was suspended last week for dealing coke out of his locker. So... If you go to an American high school, every student has their own locker, L-O-C-K-E-R. If you watch an American movie, you can probably see the kids walking in front of their lockers. Inside their locker, they keep their jackets and their school books and their Coke. By the way, C-O-K-E, if it's a small C, it means cocaine. If it's a big C, a capital C, it means Coca-Cola. <laughs> so when I say Coke, you don't know if it's a small C or a big C. But if you get our newsletter, or for people who are making the transcription, in the definition I say, locker, the place where kids keep their jackets, school books, and Coke with a big C. <laughs> <laughs> meaning Coca-Cola. So that's the idea. Now, I lived in Korea for over 20 years, and I've been to several Korean schools, and I didn't notice lockers. I'm sure some Korean schools must have lockers. What about in your country, in your school? Did you have lockers? Yeah. And for me, in elementary school, we did not have lockers, but in middle school or junior high, and in high school, we did have lockers, and we could lock our lockers. I liked that, my private room. And in my locker, what did I keep? Lots of jackets and coats and books and paper and, and trash. Yes, that was what was in my locker. So anyway, this kid had Coke in his locker, and he was selling Coke to other students from his locker. God. Among the Atlanta youth's violations, okay, so this youth, this young boy, Y-O-U-T-H, youth, Atlanta youth. Okay, so this young boy is from Atlanta, A-T-L-A-N-T-A, -A -A, Atlanta, the typical American pronunciation, Atlanta, Atlanta. So at, stop T, Lana, cancel T, Atlanta. The perfect pronunciation, Atlanta. But Americans do not say Atlanta. That sounds very British. In America, we say Atlanta. Atlanta is the biggest city in the state of Georgia. 
Georgia is a state on the eastern coast of the United States of America, just north of Florida. In the summer, it's very hot and humid in Georgia. Oof. So this boy is a senior in high school in Atlanta, Georgia. Among his violations, violations, V-I-O-L-A-T-I-O-N-S, violations, a difficult word, infractions, infractions, I-N-F-R-A-C-T-I-O-N-S. A little bit easier, rule breaking or law breaking. This guy, this kid broke the rules. He broke the law. So among the laws that he broke were, he broke the school's nutrition policies. Okay, so break the law, break the rule. We understand that. Not following a violation, an infraction. The school's policies. When we say policy, P-O-L-I-C-Y, that means rules or even laws. So policies Plural, the school's policies, the school's nutrition policies. Okay, this is confusing for people listening because Coke is a drug. Why is Coke related to nutrition policies? Hmm. People are now starting to think, was the boy selling cocaine or was he selling Coca-Cola? It's confusing. The next sentence, he's been booted for two days. He's been, he has been booted, B-O-O-T-E-D, booted, kicked out, suspended. He has been booted for two days. So he cannot go to school for two days. Hmm. Okay, selling cocaine sounds really serious. So two days? No, selling cocaine booted forever. But selling Coca-Cola is illegal? That sounds strange too. Oh, this is confusing. The next sentence. He feels, the young boy, the senior in high school, he feels wronged, noting that other kids have sold marijuana, ciggies, and even acid out of their lockers. He feels wronged. W-R-O-N-G-E-D. He feels, he believes that the school is being too hard on him. Too harsh on him. Noting, saying, mentioning that other kids, now he sold coke, but other kids have sold marijuana. M A R I. J-U-A-N-A. Marijuana, illegal in most countries around the world. In some countries, it's legal. In America, marijuana is illegal. Except in the state of Colorado and in the state of Washington. There, it is legal. So other kids have sold marijuana. In Georgia, that's illegal. Other kids have sold Siggies, C-I-G-G-I-E-S. Siggies are cigarettes. Now, children under 18 cannot smoke cigarettes, so that's illegal. Marijuana is illegal. Siggies are illegal. Other kids have sold even acid. <gasps> acid, A-C-I-D. Acid, L-S-D. This is another drug. That causes dreams and hallucinations. It is illegal. So this boy is complaining. He feels wronged. He said, other kids have sold marijuana, ciggies, and even acid out of their lockers. Why am I in trouble? I only sold coke. His mom agrees. That's right. My son has been wronged. The school went a little over the top. This is a good expression. To go over the top means did too much. Overreacted. Punished the boy too much. The mom believes the school, by suspending her boy for two days, 
that was too much. That's ridiculous. They went over the top. But mom, your boy was selling Coke. Now the last sentence. Correction. It wasn't Coke, but Pepsi that the boy sold. Wah, 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 wah. And now we know it's not cocaine, but Coca-Cola. But it wasn't Coca-Cola. The boy was selling Pepsi or Pepsi-Cola. And that was illegal in the school. It was illegal for actually two reasons. What policies? Well, number one, the nutrition policy. Pepsi has too many calories. Children in schools are not allowed to buy Pepsi. It is illegal. So the boy was breaking the school policy. He was breaking the law of the school. And also, he was selling products without a business license. That was illegal too. So, because of that, the school suspended the boy for two days. And what do you think? What's your opinion? Is that a good reason to suspend a child from school? <laughs> now, when I was young, in high school, I was never suspended. I was almost suspended. I did get into trouble, lots of trouble. Um, but... I was never suspended. I did skip school one day, and, and the teachers knew I was going to skip school. So many of the teachers on that day decided to give a test, which, of course, affected my grade. But eh, that's okay. I was a smart kid. I survived. Suspensions, I don't know. Suspensions, we have two types of suspensions. Out-of-school suspension. The kid cannot go to school. In school suspensions, the kid must stay in school. But they cannot enjoy the free time with their friends. Or they have to stay later at the school. Or they have to come in on Saturday. Now, for me, as an older guy, I think suspensions are good. Out-of-school suspensions, I do not think are good because the kid has free time. That's not a punishment. They miss school. They miss schoolwork. That's not good. In-school suspensions are good. The student must go to his classes, but during break time, during lunch time, during physical education time, during the fun times, the student must go to the suspension room where it's very quiet and very boring. And Saturday suspensions are great. In America, kids do not have school on Saturday. But if you have a Saturday suspension, that means you must go to school on Saturday. And the only thing you can do is homework all day Saturday. I think that's a good policy. And I'm sure the parents agree too. Ooh, having a Saturday with no child? That sounds nice sometimes. So anyway, this boy did get an out-of-school suspension for two days. The reason? He was selling Pepsi-Cola. Because the school policy says you cannot drink Pepsi in the school. So the boy, he saw a business opportunity. He's a smart business boy. I, I like the kid. That's something I would do. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> Let's check out those vocabulary words again. A senior in high school. A 12th grader. The last year in high school in America. Suspended. Kicked out of school for a period of time. Dealing. Selling something, usually drugs. Locker. The place where kids keep their jackets, school books, and Coke. <laughs> the place in school. Atlanta. Atlanta. 
the state of Georgia's largest city. Violations. Infractions. Rule breaking. Law breaking. Nutrition policies. Rules about nutrition. Guidelines about nutrition. Booted. B O O T E D. Kicked out. Suspended. Feels wronged. Feels that the school, in this case, was too hard on him. He believes the school was too harsh on him. Noting that. N O T I N G. Noting that. Mentioning. Saying. Siggies. C I G G I E S. Cigarettes. Acid, A-C-I-D, L-S-D, a form of drug, went a little over the top, did too much, overreacted. Let's listen two more times. The first time, nice and smooth. The second time, normal. A senior in high school was suspended last week for dealing coke out of his locker. Among the Atlanta youth's violations, he broke the school's nutrition policies. He's been booted for two days. He feels wronged, noting that other kids have sold marijuana, ciggies, and even acid out of their lockers. His mom agrees. The school went a little over the top. Uh, correction. It wasn't Coke, but Pepsi that the boy sold. A senior in high school was suspended last week for dealing Coke out of his locker. Among the Atlanta youth's violations, he broke the school's nutrition policies. He's been booted for two days. He feels wronged, noting that other kids have sold marijuana, ciggies, and even acid out of their lockers. His mom agrees. The school went a little over the top. Uh, correction. It wasn't Coke, but Pepsi that the boy sold. How you doing, everybody? This is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. If you search the internet, you'll find many people saying that the most understood word in the world is OK, followed by Coca-Cola. But that ain't the truth. The world's most recognized word is, huh? This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. That's what they say. Thank you, Country Shane. Yeah, lots of people might know OK or Coca-Cola. Those two words are known almost everywhere. 94% of the world knows OK. And almost as many people know Coca-Cola. But there is another word that's even more recognized, and it is... Huh? What? Huh? When we don't understand something, when we're surprised about something, this is the sound that we use in almost every language around the world, including really remote languages. Now, sometimes the pronunciation varies. Eh? Huh? Oh? Huh? Huh? <laughs> but it's all the same thing. And this isn't me talking. These are actual scientists and researchers at the Max Planck Institute in Germany, one of the world's finest education centers. I believe Coach Shane might be going to the Max Planck Institute to teach English. Is that right, Coach Shane? Huh? <laughs> Maybe not. All right, let's get into some questions and answers.
Our first question comes from Yanaro. Yanaro asks, "Emerge and emerge. <gasps> They sound so similar, but of course the meaning is the opposite. How can we distinguish these words?" Great question. Emerge, I M M E R G E. Emerge, E M E R G E. Okay, the words are basically antonyms. They mean the opposite. Emerge means to put something in water, to make something disappear. Emerge means to appear, to come out of something. And actually, yanoro the pronunciation should be different. When we say I M M E R G E, we should say emerge. He emerged the ball in the water. He emerged the ball in the water. When we say emerge, we also usually use the preposition in or into. Emerge. Emerge, E M E R G E. We should actually say e. Some people might say emerge a little bit shorter, but the proper pronunciation is emerge, not emerge, but emerge. After an hour, the ball emerged from the water. The ball came out of the water. When we use the verb emerge. We usually use the preposition from. So I hope that helps. The pronunciation is different. Emerge, emerge, e e e e, emerge, emerge. Now, about a week or two ago, Yanoro, on my YouTube channel called Coach Shane's ESL, I made a video, and the video talks about the e. And e sounds, for example, sheet and shit, and、uh, those other bad words. But those words are really important because if you make a mistake,、uh, you can embarrass yourself. Please check that video once again.、Uh, just look up on my video channel, S H I T and S H E E T. And you'll see the video, and I talk about these two different vowel sounds. Thank you so much. Our next question from Ahmad Tav Tavakoli Tavok Tavakoli Tavak Tavakoli、uh, Ahmed. Thank you so much for your question. Do you have any videos that teach where to stress words? Great question.、Um, this is a very important subject. So many students ask me about which words are important in a sentence, where to stress parts of words、uh, in a sentence, which words should I stress, which words should I have no stress, intonation. Well, Ahmed,、uh, I am developing a class, and I call the class Perfect English. And when you hear the word perfect. You think P E R F E C T, right? Well, my perfect is actually P I R F, all big letters, and then small letters E C T. And my P stands for pronunciation. And I teach in this class. I teach American pronunciation. The I stands for intonation. Which words to stress? The R stands. For rhythm, how to group words together, and the F stands for flow, how fast or how slow to read the English words, the sentences. So, perfect English is a new class that I am developing right now. It's all about speaking, pronunciation, intonation, rhythm, and flow. So I'm still developing it. If you are interested in this perfect English class, send me an email, and I'll give you the class for free. Well, this lesson.、Uh, I've had two lessons so far. I'm we're in the middle of the third lesson right now, and、uh, 
I'll probably launch the class at the end of the month or maybe in October. So this is the time to check out the class and it's free. Okay, I'll give you this class for free. So send me an email, Ahmad and anybody else. My email address, dailydictationmembers at gmail.com. Once again, dailydictationmembers at gmail.com. Send an email and uh, I'll send you the class. Okay? Thank you. The next question comes from Jean Alain. Jean Alain, do we have to pronounce the OO vowel in words like go or home? Uh huh. That's a great question. Okay, so look at the word go, G O. Do we say go or go? Listen carefully. Go, 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 go. Go, go. So the first time I was saying it, it's very short. O, O, O. Just a long O. Go, go, go. But the second time I said it, it's even longer and we hear an oo sound at the end. Go, go, go home. (gasps) Go home. Yeah, we can hear an oo sound, right? Jean Alain, both are acceptable. I think if you asked an American, do you say go or go? Americans will say, oh, we just say go. But actually, many times when Americans are speaking, especially if they stress the word, they do have the oo sound attached. That happens a lot with the o. So my answer Jean Alain is you do not have to, but it is very common to pronounce the oo when you see a long o. Okay? For me, how do I say it? I actually try to keep my vowels clear. Go home. Go home. But that doesn't sound very natural. If I were talking to my sister, I would say, go home. And definitely you can hear the oo. Thanks for the question, Jean Alain. And the next question comes from Mr. Last 14. All I did was study. All I can do is study. All I have to do is study. What does all mean? (laughs) Yeah, it's a great question. So all usually means everything. Who ate all the cookies? Every cookie. Me. But in this case, in these sentences, all means the only thing. All I did was study. The only thing I did was study. All I can do is study. The only thing I can do is study. I have no other abilities. (laughs) All I have to do is study. The only thing I have to do. The only thing I need to do. The only thing I am required to do is study. That's a great expression. All I have is time. The only thing I have is time. All I have is five dollars. The only money I have is five dollars. So this is a great usage of the word all. And right now, I am all out of time. I'm completely out of time. Let's move on. Okay, that music right there is for Coach Shane's book club. And we will now have the book club in a separate podcast right here on this channel. So either today or tomorrow, I'll upload that podcast just for the book club. Now, for people who are paying attention, who are studying along with me in the book club, this is the final week for the book, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and It's All Small Stuff. 
And we're finishing up the book, the last 23 chapters, 24 chapters, I think. It's a great book. It's great advice for, for anybody. And our next book is going to be The Rosie Project. Also a very fine book. That book is almost eight hours long, so we're going to be listening to two hours of the book every week. That's what you need to do. So if you have the book, if you have the printed book, you have to think about 25% of the book the first week, then the next quarter, the next week, etc. So every month, we have a different book. Once again, next month's book is The Rosie Project. The Rosie, R-O-S-I-E, Project. P-R-O-J-E-C-T. This audiobook you can get for free if you go to www.audibletrial.com slash L-M-E. One more time, www.audibletrial.com that's A U D I B L E T R I A L dot com slash L M E. L M E, of course, let's master English. The Rosie Project. Sign up, get this book for free. The author is Grammy uh, Simpson, G R A E M E. S-I-M-S-I-O-N. And the book is about 7 hours and 30 minutes long. It's a long book. Well, actually, some books can be really long, 30 hours long. You bet. Some of those books get huge. But this is a pretty good book. Um, The accent is not American English. It's, I'm not sure if it's Australian or New Zealand, but it's very clear. Sometimes the Aussie pronunciation can be really impossible but this book is fine audiobooks are not simple you know it takes your concentration but they're great fun and they're so good to improve your listening skills so what i recommend you do if you're interested in audiobooks but you're a beginner then get the audiobook and the print book get them both And when you have time, listen to the audiobook as you read. Or maybe you can read a chapter, then listen to a chapter. That's a great thing to do. It's really excellent, and it will really help you. And if you go to that link I gave you, www.audibletrial.com slash LME, then it helps me. They're a sponsor of the program. This is an Amazon company, so this is a great company. So that's what the book is coming up next week. It's going to be great, The Rosie Project, and uh, I hope that you join the club. By the way, uh, the first book is free, and then after that, every month, Amazon will charge you $14.95 every month. And that might sound expensive, but it's not. Every month, we're going to study an audio book, and with that membership, you can actually get the newest books for $14.95 when the actual price is $20 and $25. So you're actually saving money if you use the service, okay? So think about that. Get it. And if you're in the book club, be sure to listen to the podcast. Coming up again either probably tomorrow and at the latest the next day. Thank you so much, everybody, for once again listening to this podcast. It means so much to me. I, I love to see and hear from you. Um, yeah, if you want to get the newsletter for this podcast, please sign up on our email list. You can go to www.letsmasterenglish.com slash try DDM. If you do that, uh, you'll go on the email list and every week we send out the newsletter, which gives you the glossary and all the important links and the news story. And of course, if you're interested in joining the transcription team, then go to our Google Plus community. That's Let's Master English. Just search for Google Plus Communities, join, 
and uh, leave a message. You can look around there. You'll see lots of activity. To get the transcription, once again, just visit our website, www.letsmasterenglish.com. Now, today's podcast is brought to you by DDM Open. DDM is the finest English class online, absolutely, and everybody who takes it, well, not everybody, I think 98%, seriously, 98%, maybe one or two people said it was difficult or too easy, seriously, everybody else seems to love it, and it makes me so happy. DDM Open is perfect for the busy person. Somebody who's busy, somebody whose schedule kind of changes all the time. You know, you have 30 minutes here and then maybe 30 minutes there. DDM Open is perfect. If you are serious about improving your English, DDM is a great class and DDM Open gives you flexibility. Every month, I will send you eight lessons. So basically, two lessons a week. You can study. If you have time, study eight lessons in one week. That's fine. Some of you do that. Actually, I have one DDM Open student right now who studies 24 lessons a month. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, he is hardcore. He's fantastic. So eight lessons. Eight lessons is enough. Okay, that's that's enough. But uh, I sent it. As soon as you sign up, I send you eight lessons. And then at the beginning of each month, I send you another eight lessons. And the price is so nice. So I want you guys to join. Join it. Live it. Love it. Learn it. And let's master English together. You can join DDM Open by going to ddmopen.blogspot. That's B-L-O-G-S-P-O-T dot That's it. It has all the information you need. And on the right-hand side, there is a subscription button. You can sign up there. Of course, we have uh, Western Union, too. If you have any questions, once again, send me an email, dailydictationmembers at gmail.com, and I will do my best to answer your questions. Some of you are saying, what is DDM? Daily Dictation Masters. And what we do is, in each lesson, I give you a video and an audio file and a text file. And you have to do some of the dictation. Usually not all, some. And then I give you the answers and a glossary, which is like a dictionary. And I give you another video that explains the pronunciation, the cancellation, the linking, all those important pronunciation points. This is where I teach you how Americans speak. It's very important classes, very important lessons. And finally, I give you another video that explains the story, the culture, the background, the humor, the expressions. It's a full, full full course and it's always different it's always fun so join it i hope you do join that's it everybody once again thank you so much you guys have a fantastic week and i will see you again with another let's master english podcast together let's master english